Auto Obsessed here. What does it take to get the max sale price when you're selling your used car? Or maybe you just want to get the best detail and results on your daily driven vehicle. Either way, stay tuned because that's what Auto Obsessed is here for. We help detailers get the best results. We've got a 2011 Porsche Cayenne here that's going up for sale and has seen some better days. The owner has just given it to us so we can demonstrate how to bring a car up to its best condition to help it sell faster and get the best sell price. First plan of attack for any detail, we'd want to walk around, do an inspection and see what the condition of the various parts of the car are and determine what steps we would need to take. For this vehicle, it is very dirty and difficult to get a full idea of the condition despite the obvious that we can see right now. So we will not be able to go over too much in this stage until it is cleaned up. Some of the obvious things we can see, um, the wheels are in, in rough condition, they haven't been washed in some time, so we're going to be dealing with quite a bit of brake dust and grime. The paint protection film is quite old, it's yellowed, it's dull, it's literally two different uh, contrasts of, of uh, gloss. That's going to make a, a major difference. I can see the cowling has some damage, it's uh, sun faded. Looking at some of it, we can see the B, B pillars are scratched up just from people opening and closing the doors and touching the paint. But really overall, it, it's too difficult to, to get a full idea just at this stage. So what we're going to do is we're gonna, just going to move ahead now and we're going to go into our cleaning process. Let's do a wash and get the dirt off the car to see exactly what we'll be working with. Our method for the first part of the restoration detail is get the engine bay cleaned up, the wheels and the exhaust tips cleaned. These are the dirtiest areas and won't affect our process later versus us cleaning these areas when the rest of the car is clean. That would just end up getting water spray and debris on the parts that we've already finished. To clean the engine bay, we're going to use various cleaners and brushes. We're using a mild cleaner and various soft brushes for this engine bay as it's in pretty good condition and not extremely dirty. Once all the surfaces have been cleaned, we can dry and rewash areas that might still need attention before we continue on. You can dry with towels, but the best and fastest way to dry an engine is using a touchless air dryer. We use the Metrovac Master Blaster air dryer. The dryer will dry quicker and also reach areas that you couldn't otherwise with towels. The next area we're going to address is the wheels. It's a good idea to wash the wheels before washing the body of the vehicle because the wheels are really the dirtiest part of the car. They touch the road, they get covered in road debris, and on the European cars, lots of brake dust build up. If we wash them now, it'll eliminate the risk of splashing debris over the car later, so let's get these out of the way. We'll start with spraying the wheel cleaner on the rims, for this vehicle, we'll be using a stronger wheel cleaner that has an iron remover in it to help remove the brake dust buildup. We'll also be using a cleaner on the rubber to remove any of the silicones and previous wheel dressings that were on there. We'll be using various brushes to help loosen the debris and get into all the areas of the rim. The more work we do now will be the less labor and touch up we'll have to do afterwards and we also don't want to rewash the rims later. Before we move on we're going to dry these wheels with our master blaster. We don't want the water dribbling out and making water spots later. Water accumulates in the corners, between the spokes, and at the bottom of the lug holes, etc. And the Master Blaster can push that water out of the holes and dry the wheels really, really nicely. It also helps minimize some of the rusting on the brake rotors because we're drying them quicker. Next up, the exhaust tips. 
We can see a little damage and discoloration on the exhaust tips, even without cleaning away the debris and exhaust carbon buildup. So it's likely that these parts aren't going to get perfectly clean because the exhaust tips are already damaged. Let's see what we can do with a single stage of polishing soap. This is a very useful soap for exhaust tips because it's mild enough to not damage most exhaust tip finishes, but works extremely well in doing a great job of tackling this difficult area. Now we move on to the decontamination wash process so we can prepare the car for the next stages, whether that is a paint correction and or to apply a last step product like a wax, a sealant or ceramic coating. Let's go ahead now and do the decontamination wash to get a better idea what condition this Porsche Cayenne is in. For this case we'll start out with a pre-wash soap because this vehicle is extremely dirty and has not seen a complete hand wash and decon for a very long time. This stage will help break down the surface contamination and loosen the debris to make it easier to be removed, reducing additional paint damage in our washing and decon stages. Plus it'll save us some time by not potentially having to rewash the car a few times over to take off the debris. After the pre-wash, we'll put another coat of snow foam onto the car. This adds more cleaning power and adds a nice lubrication for our hand wash mitt. For the hand wash stage, we'll use a two bucket method with grit guards and multiple wash pads. The wash pads collect dirt, dust and sand, all abrasives from the body of the car and we need to do our utmost to separate those abrasives from the wash mitt. After cleaning a section of the car, the mitt is thoroughly rinsed in the rinse bucket, getting rid of the contaminants it picked up. Wring it out and plunge it into the shampoo bucket to pick up a new load of sudsy shampoo. The wash starts with the roof and we work down the sides towards the bottom. The bottom is obviously the dirtiest. That's where most of the mud and dirt sticks to the car. For that reason, we change the wash pads as we get closer to the bottom. Again, all these precautions are in place to minimize the abrasive action onto the paint. We really want to minimize scratches from the hand wash. After the first hand wash and rinse, we'll then move on to the chemical decon process, starting with iron removal. This will get rid of the embedded iron particles, get them out of the clear coat, we can see some rust colored specks in the paint, especially on the fenders, behind the wheels and around the back of the car. We just spray on the iron remover, let it dwell and then lightly agitate. This is a great product in helping us take off this step and it's going to save us a little bit more time later on. Moving on to the tar removal process. We can see and feel some tar spots where the asphalt and tar have come up from the road and stuck to the paint. So our next step on our chemical decontamination is to get rid of these specks of tar. We're going to use a tar removal product. We're going to spray it on, let it dwell and lightly agitate. After we've done the chemical process to remove the iron and tar, we're going to go ahead and rinse the car fully, then move on to a mechanical stage. In all cases, we may not have to do a mechanical stage, but this vehicle has a lot of buildup. And even after doing the first pre-wash, hand wash, and the chemical process, we're still finding that there's still contamination on the surface. So we're going to move on this time with using detailing clay. We're going to use some clay lubricant. Then we're going to be rubbing the detailing clay over the surface of the car to pick up any lingering dirt and any remaining embedded contaminants off of the paint surface. Now that we've got the clay bar work all done, at this point we've got every bit of dirt and contaminants off of the paint that we possibly can. 
There's one area we haven't washed yet though, the door jams. We've left those until the last because the car is still wet and we still have to do a full hand wash. So we do the jams first and then we're going to do our last hand wash and then go on to drying. Now we're going to move on to our last hand wash. We have to do this because we still might have some residues left over from the chemical process of the iron remover and tar removal. Also, we'll still have some clay lubricant, maybe some little bits of clay and some debris that still could potentially be on the painted surface. So we're going to do one last quick car wash to thoroughly wash the rest of it and get ready for drying. Now we've finished washing and rinsing the car, we're going to go on to our last stage now and that's drying the car. We're going to use the Master Blaster Touchless Air Dryer. It's a good idea to dry the car if you're not using filtered water and even if you are using filtered water. There's a good chance that water left to dry on the car is going to leave water spots all over, basically killing all of the washing work you just did. We have washed the car and did a full decontamination of the paint. Now we can get a full understanding of what we're up against on preparing this car for detailing. Let's do a walk around and see what areas stand out and will be the focus of our work. So we'll start at the front of the car here. One of the biggest things that jumps out is the paint protection film. So the paint protection film would have been installed on this car from day one. It's just a partial, partial nose film, very, very weathered. It's definitely had seen better days and it's time to come off. The headlights, good news is the headlights were covered. It looks like again from the beginning. So all the damage on top is gonna come off when we take off the paint protection film. This yellowing is gonna disappear. We might have to do a light polish and uh, we'll put new paint protection film on the headlights will look brand new. So this will be a major change to the vehicle once we do this area. We will have some challenges here because it was a partial uh, a bra or paint protection film. This car is 200,000 kilometers. So we are going to have quite a difference. This is going to be um, no rock chips or sandblasting, but here has a lot. So this is going to be a pretty big challenge for us. Uh, so we'll do the best we can, do some paint touch-ups, polish it out, and then finish the whole area with full hood, full fenders, bumper, headlights, and that'll, that'll smarten it up quite a bit. Coming around to the side here, the wheels are actually in quite good shape, so we've done our cleaning and such in our decontamination wash. They do show signs of typical wear and tear, but overall very good, so we won't be doing much more to them uh, other than final details a little bit later. On the side here, we do have some impact damage, some damage to the plastics. Uh, we will uh, be doing some corrections, some paint touch-ups and improve that up, improve that quite a bit. The windshield cowling is very, very weathered. It's, it's gray. We'll be able to clean this up, re-dye it, make it look near pretty much brand new again. So that's gonna make a pretty big change we see the same thing on the mirrors. We'll be able to do the same thing here, clean it up and re-dye that. The mirror caps weren't, uh, have no paint protection film on it, so it has a lot of rock chips and sandblasting, so once again, we'll do as much as we can to that. Now the entire car is covered in lots of scratches and swirls, so we're gonna be putting most of the focus on a paint correction on this car. We look at the B pillars, the door handle, the door, lots of damage here from handling. So basically opening and closing the door. So here we have literally gray and black. So this is gonna be a big area of improvement once we're finished. Throughout we have our door marks, some, some paint missing from gashes and such. So once again, we'll clean that up. This door, same as the front door, very, very damaged and working our way to the back here. The back of the car, this side's quite good. One of the biggest things that stands out is the tail lights. Tail lights are in great condition. They're not cracked or, or broken, but they're quite scratched and swirled. So just from all the years of handling the car. So what we'll do is we'll polish that. We'll make them look near new. Taking a look at the back. Now we get to the bumper and the tailpipes. So there's really not a lot we're gonna be able to do on a detailing aspect. 
They're, they're too far gone and the only way to improve them radically is going to be a full recondition, so a repaint and, and potentially recoat the exhaust tip. So we're only going to be able to clean them and we'll improve them as much as we can. The badging, just over the years there's a lot of buildup in between the badging that we're just not going to be able to detail out. So what we'll do is we'll pull the badging, we'll clean the area and we'll be able to polish underneath and then put the badging back on and that'll make it look a lot better and be a high attention to detail point. So now that we've looked at and done the full inspection of the car, we've got a really good idea where we're going to go and now we can go ahead and prepare the car for our paint correction. That's it for the first video on our prep a used car to maximize the sale price or if you're looking to refresh your current car series. In the next video we're going to totally take care of the rest of the exterior of this Cayenne starting with removing the old paint protection film from the front of the car, a paint correction or multi-stage polishing, including removing and replacing the badging on the rear, polishing the headlights and taillights, installing brand new paint protection film to give the best protection against rock chips and sandblasting damage, also preserve the paint for as long as possible. Lastly, we'll be restoring some of the faded plastic trim around the car. It's going to be a big job, but I'm certain the results will shine and blow the owner away. If you'd like to see more detailing work like this, please take a second to click like on this video and click subscribe and notify to see new upcoming videos from Auto Obsessed. And thank you for watching.